So, friends, we begin this Mass in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. To celebrate this Mass, we will be called to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and for mercy. I confess to Almighty God. And to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. The Almighty God have mercy on us, may forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who have taught us to chasten our bodies for the healing of our souls, enable us, we pray, to abstain from all sin and strengthen our hearts to carry out your loving commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Learn to do good. Make justice your aim. Hear the word of the Lord, princes of Sodom. Listen to the instruction of our God, people of Gomorrah. Wash yourselves clean. Put away your misdeeds. Before my eyes, cease doing evil, learn to do good. Make justice your aim, redress the wrong. Hear the orphan's plea, defend the widow. Come now, let us set things right, says the Lord. Though your sins be like scarlet, they may become white as snow. Though they be crimson red, they may become white as wool. If you are willing and obey, you shall eat the good things of the land. But if you refuse and resist, the sword shall consume you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In response to our psalmist, to the upright, I will show the saving power of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your bond offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goods out of your fold. Response. To, to the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth? Though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you, Respond. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to eat? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me. And to him that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. Respond. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now please take the rest of us. Repent, says the Lord, for the kingdom of 
heaven is close at hand. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please let him take that response again, hallelujah, or the, the glory and praise. Just sing it. Glory, glory and praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you. Oh Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. So practice and observe whatever they tell you, but not what they do, for they preach but do not practice. They bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with their finger. They do all their deeds to be seen by men, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long, and they love the place of honor at feasts and the best seats in the synagogues and salutations in the marketplaces and being called rabbi by men. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brethren. And call no man your father on earth, for you have one father who is in heaven. Neither be called masters, for you have one master, the Christ. 
he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. By the hearing of this Gospel, my sins be wiped away. Amen. Beloved friends, I welcome you in a very special way to the 12th day, the reflection for the 12th day. The theme for today is a very unusual theme because if you pay attention to the readings, it's not the first thing that will strike you. What would rather strike you will be about hearing the word of God about obedience to the law and to authorities, whether they practice what they preach or mandate or not. Of course, sometimes lawmakers themselves can also become lawbreakers. But however, what's instructive to me, what really appealed to me, I want to say I decided to go away a bit from that which is statutory to something which is prophetic. And uh, that is from the responsorial psalm of the Mass of today. Where God says, a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, I will show God's salvation to the upright. In the very version of this verse, it says, the one whose way is blameless, I will show the salvation of God. And he says, I do not rebuke you for your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I do not take more bullocks from your farms, nor goods from among your herd. How can you recite my covenants and take my covenants on your lips? You who despise correction and cast my words behind you. You do this, and should I keep silence? Do you think I am like you? And then God says, I accuse you, lay the charge before you. And God is saying, what honors me is a sacrifice of praise. Sometimes we sing, we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. What is a sacrifice of praise? What is a sacrifice of thanksgiving? Salvation refers to the act of God's grace in delivering his people from bondage to sin and condemnation. In saving us, God has transferred us from the dominion of darkness to the kingdom of his beloved son. Confirm Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. And God has given us eternal life. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. All of the basis of what Christ accomplished in his atonic sacrifice. So this scripture teaches us one of the keys to activate and apply God's saving power to a particular context. Are you here believing God for a particular thing? Are you here expecting something? Is there something that has been giving you sleepless nights? Today, I want to say to you, instead of spending your time worrying, let's look at ways to activate the salvation of God in that particular area of need. Praise. Praise. And praise again. Psalm 150, verse 6. The Lord commands us to praise Him. Psalm 50, verse 14. It is a due sacrifice we offer God. Psalm 96 verse 8. Thus as the other sacrifices we owe Him, it takes humility to praise God. Humility to recognize our sinfulness before Him. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 16. Hence the devil uses afflictions 
and trials to stop us from trusting and praising God. Jude chapter 1, 10 to 11. Praise becomes a sacrifice when we worship God in our pains and frustrations. When God seems far away and our prayers appear seemingly unanswered, This is what the psalmist calls a sacrifice of thanksgiving. That is a responsorial psalm of this verse. It is offered as an act of faith. You are not saying, Lord, I thank you because I am suffering. No. It is offered as an act of faith in view of an expected favor. It is a way of saying, Lord, I thank you because I know that you are capable and bigger than what I am currently facing. Psalm 91 verse 14 b. It's a way of saying, I completely trust you to bring out the best out of this situation. Mark chapter 11 verse 24. What does that really say? So for whatever you are asking God, believe that it is going to be yours and you are going to have it. And so if you know that something is already yours, what do you do? You tell you praise God for it. So, praise is an act of total surrender. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean, Lord, on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct, and he shall direct your power. Praise is a refusal to worry about that need which has already been presented to God in prayer. Once you have presented something to God in prayer, and you are raised assured, and you believe that what you presented to God has been heard, then switch into the mood of praise. Begin to thank Him. Before now, I've referred this to gratitude in. Often we thank, we thank people when they do something for us. Sometimes we go to church for Thanksgiving when we have experienced God's salvific actions in our lives. On day eight of this program, I said, when we pray in pain or pray through tragedies, we turn our prayers into a sacrifice that glorifies God. So it is that particular motif that I am expanding today. Again, when we pray in pain, and we have the courage to pray through tragedies, we turn our prayers into a sacrifice that glorifies God. And today I say, praise becomes a sacrifice when we worship God in our pains and frustrations. When God seems far away, the Lord will sing, Lord, you seem too far away. A million miles or more it feels today. And do I often lost my faith? I must confess right now that it's hard for me to pray. Lord, I don't know what to say. I don't know where to start. But as you give the grace with all that's in my heart, I will pray. I will sing. Even in my darkest hour, through the sorrows and the pain, I will sing, I will praise, lift my voice to honor you. Why? Because your word is true. So praying and worshiping God through the, your sorrow and your pain, what does it do? By praising him, you are letting him know, Father, I trust you. I know you are capable. I know you have all it takes. 
to bring me out of this place. It is not a time for you to complain. I have said complaints and excuses have never solved problems. Worries have never solved problems, friends. Why don't we follow the giants of our faith? When Peter the Apostle was arrested and put in prison, instead of the church complaining to God, why have you done this to us? We are told the church prayed until something happened. When Paul and Silas were put in prison, after they have been thoroughly beaten, after they have been fastened, they had every right to have been complaining, God, after all that we are doing, don't even hear what people say that this man who have turned the world upside down have also come here. Look at all the glory we have done to your name. Look at the expansion we are doing to your kingdom on earth. But look at the way we are suffering. They could have been spending their night doing that. But we are told, instead of that, while other prisoners we are listening, we are told these guys switch. To the mood of praise and they began to worship god that heaven could not just raise what manner of human beings are these that in spite of what they are going through with all their sufferings they still have the courage to press me oh no 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 let's also do something to let these guys know that we accept heaven accepts gratitude in so that is what I call gratitude in, not gratitude for. Gratitude for is the one you do when God has blessed you. You go for dancing in the church. Oh, I survived accident. That is gratitude for. I'm talking about gratitude in. So gratitude in is a higher dimension of gratitude than gratitude for. And this year is our year higher dimension. So we need faith that refuses to bow to pressures of life. The faith that rises on eagle's wings and continues to fly even in the face of the storms. These guys praise God and praise God and praise God until heaven became restless. As heaven was restless, as the praise resounded right there at the throne of grace, there was earthquake. What happened at that point, friends? The Lord gave me a vision of these events one day. He said, when they began to praise God in the prison, the glory of the Lord descended. And by the time the glory of God descended, he who is bigger than the biggest, he who is mightier than the mightiest and greater than the greatest, when his glory descended now on the prison, what happens was also what happens in Exodus chapters 19 through 24. The glory of the Lord, when it descended on Mount Sinai, we are told the mountain could not contain the presence of God because the Israelites wanted to see God. They wanted to experience God. And when he came with his glory, even the mountains could not handle the glory and the mountain began to vibrate. That is exactly what happened. And so, beloved friends, in the name of Jesus Christ, as we praise him, as we worship him through this sacrifice, the glory of the Lord is coming right in. The glory of the Lord is coming right in. And it's coming in. You can be sure that even the sickness that is on the inside of you will not be able to contain the power of this glory and it will fly out. Demons if they, who have been afflicting you cannot contain the glory of the Lord and the chains and the yokes will be broken. Oh, as the glory of the Lord is coming because you are praising him, you can be sure that even the womb that has been dormant will need to do something that corresponds to what you are doing. Oh, when you praise God, you are attracting a higher dimension of His presence in your life. And when this presence comes, you can be sure that when the perfect comes, the imperfect disappears. I don't know whether I'm communicating with somebody here. We are talking about switching on to a higher dimension. You could have chosen to worry. You could have chosen to cry and lament, but you said no. I know that I can make it. I know that I can no matter what may come my way. My life is in your hand. Or you pray it like Job. Even in the context of the affliction, I know. My Redeemer lives. Oh yes, I know. My Redeemer lives. 
Friends, that's the message I brought you this morning or this, this evening to declare open the day 12 of our prayer. So I want to tell you, I want to encourage you in a very special way. Find time as much as you can. Find time to praise. Find time to worship Him. That's also why we specifically put the litany of praise in this booklet. So that at your private time, you can also switch into that mood. And you can begin to worship God. He is worthy of our praise. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. That is all. That is the food that God cannot resist. That is the food that heaven does not resist. Why don't you just praise Him? As you praise Him, let chains, let barnacles, let shackles, malahi akala, begin to scatter. As you praise Him, may you be lifted up. When you lift him up, he lifts you up. Listen to me. When you lift God up, you are lifted up in the praises, in, in, in the process. When you acknowledge him, he acknowledges you. Oh, Jesus himself says that when you honor me before men, I will also honor you in the presence of my Father who is in heaven. Why don't we just praise him? And so before I close this segment, for those of you who respond, Representing the people gathered here tonight. Can somebody there just sing over there on Zoom? Just give us one, three people. You just give us a song of worship. Only once. Let's see how that goes. And then for those of you joining us on Facebook, why don't you just begin to praise God? Why don't you begin to call him names in your own language? Why don't you begin to keep dropping? Say, Lord, I praise you. I worship you. Even in my darkest moment, I worship you because I know you are bigger than what I am. You are bigger than what people say. You are bigger than every mountain. Bigger than all my problems. Bigger than everything. Why don't you begin to praise him? Use your hand and begin to be typing them and dropping them on the comment section. Those of you on Facebook, those of you joining us right now on Instagram, you can begin to celebrate the Lord. There is power in praise. So who is the first person to do that for us on Zoom, please? There are a few of you that who are co-hosts, please just unmute. One person should sing the hymn of praise quickly. Somebody should just give us a worship quickly, please. <laughs> Jesus gave us 
He more confit Jesus ke who said me. Kinigo yo yo we walk someday. Mi bi diga fo o we mi apata. Apwa basi amana sambu tiere e wo tiere. Apwa basi amana sambu tiere e wo tiere. So Boy, come the who put in the Boy, come the who I never walk in pony. Boy, come the who who put in the fee. Hail Mary, full of grace, and the Lord is with you. Blessed are the monks, women, and places, the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.